Dear sisters and brothers, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say of his passion and resurrection. For it was accomplished this mystery that he entered this home city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of cross, we may have a share in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches. with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. As he drew near to Bethany and Bethphage, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, go into the village opposite you, and as you enter, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? He will answer, The master has need of it. So those who had been sent went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying this colt? They answered, The master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount him. And as he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now, as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said to, in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we begin this uh, Holy Week with the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. And as we have heard in the Gospel, the entry was joyous. People welcomed him, those who believed in him. But things changed so fast. 
All the same people who welcomed him, they turned around him, as we are going to hear uh, in the Passion, the Gospel that we are going to read in the church. But the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem is showing how much he loved us and is showing how much he submitted to his Father to do his will so that we can have a new life, so that the whole world can have the gift of salvation. And that's what we begin today in this Holy Week. So all of us, we are being invited to open our hearts with joy to welcome our Lord Jesus Christ, but not to be like what happened in Jerusalem, like they turned around against him, but to always be with joy in his presence and to bring him uh, with joy to other people. So now we are going to process into the church. Uh, we are going this way following the altar saver. Uh, those who cannot walk, you can go in the church. We'll find you there while processing. But we all have to sing the song when they start so that we celebrate together. Thank you.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, gracious grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear and I have not rebelled have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Proclaim your name to my brethren in 
of Jacob, give glory to him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. The passion of our Lord no, Jesus. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you have to see. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became all. The point of death, even death, on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat, eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out amongst them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The king of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant, for who is greater, the one seated at the table or the one who saves? Is it not the one seated at the table? I am among you as the one who saves. 
It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my fathers conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? They replied, he said to them, But now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack, and one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. Namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, But he replied, It is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them, and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear, ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and the <clears throat> temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away, and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man too was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted. Assuredly, this man was with him, for he also is a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing him and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, And they reviled him in saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin, they said. If you are the Christ, tell us. 
But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposed the faith of the past to Caesar and maintained that he is a prophet. Yet we know that this man is not from God. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. And upon hearing that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have found this man guilty of the... I have, I have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him. Nor did Herod, for he sent them back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then, and then release him. But altogether they shouted out, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting, Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I have found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breast that never nursed. At that time people say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when, is it, when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. 
Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you'll be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was waiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. We have begun this Holy Week. As we are outside, we read the entry of our Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem, and he was welcomed with joy. But suddenly things changed. People turned against him, and no one was in joy anymore. Everybody was enraged, and they all wanted him to die. And the Lord was ready, that's why he entered Jerusalem. He wanted to accomplish his father's mission, and that mission is to save all of us and the whole world. And he was really resolved to do that. As we have heard from the uh, first reading, the prophet Isaiah, we heard that, like Jesus Christ, his tongue was trained really to do the service, the service for other people, and his ears were tuned to listen to his father. And that is the way we have seen in our Lord Jesus Christ. Even at the time when things became so difficult, so tough, the suffering was really so intense. And the Lord Jesus Christ is showing that even in those moments, he was able to continue to teach 
even his disciples. In the midst of all this, we heard the disciples fighting amongst themselves. Who is the greatest? For them, the entry into Jerusalem was like now Jesus Christ is going to take this uh, earthly uh, kingdom. But that was not it. And that's why he cautioned them. If you want to be the greatest, you have to be the youngest. If you want to be the leader, you have to be a servant. And that's the way Jesus Christ responded to his father. Even in the garden, when he saw the suffering that he was going to go through, he asked his father if this cup could be taken away. But again, he said, not my will, but your will be done. And that is how the Lord Jesus Christ is teaching us today as we begin this Holy Week to submit to God's will in every time of our lives, in every situation, in every circumstances of our lives that we submit to God's will because that is what Jesus Christ came here for, to teach us that as servants of the Lord, we have to use our tongue, the gift of speech, to save others. We have to tune in with our ears to the will of God so that we do his mission according to the way we learn from our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus is showing us yet another very important part of his life. Even at the time he was dying, he said, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. And that is what Jesus is teaching us, the heart of forgiveness. Even when people are pushing back, we have to have that spirit, the spirit of compassion and mercy. That is what this uh, uh, Holy Week means to us. Jesus came for all people to gather us together as one. And then we heard when Peter denied Jesus three times, Jesus was not just looking that way. He turned back and looked at Peter. That's what Jesus does to us. He comes back to us. He turns, he looked into our eyes so that we know he's there for us. And Peter remembered and he cried bitterly. He repented and he turned around to Jesus. That's what Christ is teaching us today. Let us be for him. Let, our, let uh, lift our voices to bring salvation wherever we are. And let's tune in to the will of God to fulfill his mission. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty make of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now I invite you to sit as we are going to commission the Eucharistic ministers. <clears throat>
When I call your name, please come in front. Larry Moek. Donna Moek. Stephanie Rosso. Maggie Kleger. Anna Bird. Carl Hare. Bonnie Kaplight. David Kaplight. Emily Cantro. Richard Conlon. They are Eucharistic minister who has come to this mass who was supposed to be at 10 o'clock that have left the name. My dear friends in Christ, our sisters and brothers are being entrusted with the important ministry of administering the Eucharist and with taking Holy Communion to the sick and with giving it as a viaticum to the dying. In this ministry, you, my sisters and brothers, must be examples of the Christian life, taking our faith ever more seriously and striving to grow in holiness through this sacrament of love and unity. Remember that, though we are many, we who share this one bread and one cup become one body in Christ Jesus. As ministers of the Holy Communion, be therefore especially observant of the Lord's command to love your neighbor. For when he gave his body as food to his disciples, he told them, this is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Now, my sisters and brothers, are you resolved to administer the body and blood of the Lord to your brothers and sisters and to save to build the church? Are you resolved to administer the Holy Eucharist with utmost care and reverence? Are you resolved to administer the Holy Eucharist to your brothers and sisters who are sick without any kind of discrimination. I ask the assembly to stand. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ, let us now pray with confidence to God our Father. Let us ask that these, our brothers and sisters, who have been chosen to be ministers of the Eucharist may be fulfilled with God's blessing. So it has paused for a moment and offer personal prayer for them. Now all of us, we extend our hands towards them for the blessing. Both our hands, both, so that the spirit become powerful. Gracious God, creator and guide of your family, bless our brothers and sisters. May they give the bread of life and the cup of salvation to your faithful people be strengthened and comforted by it, and one day share in the everlasting banquet of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Let us now present our petitions and the needs to our Lord.
On this Palm Sunday, just as people of Jerusalem celebrated the arrival of Jesus into their city, we pray that as his followers resolve to joyfully welcome him into our homes and our everyday lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world broken in war, violence and terrorism, in drugs and addictions, in harassment and abuse, with distress for Ukraine and other war-torn countries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people everywhere who, like Jesus, carry a heavy cross of poverty, homelessness, illness, unemployment, desperation, faithlessness, devoid of purpose, and bereavement, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we reflect on the brutality suffered by Jesus at the hands of his executioners, we pray for an end to gender, social and racial injustice, discrimination and prejudice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the RCIA candidates and catechumens in our parish and diocese, preparing for baptism, confirmation, and first Holy Communion at the Easter Vigil, be blessed and filled with joy of encountering Jesus in the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, family members, parishioners, victims of war and religious persecution, of murder and suicide, of accident and natural disasters, that by God's mercy, they all be welcomed into his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Well, what else shall we pray? Lord, hear our prayer. our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we lift up our prayers to you this morning, spoken and unspoken. And as we start this Holy Week, Lord, give us the spirit to walk with our Lord Jesus Christ in his suffering and through the celebration of our salvation through Christ our Lord.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in Jeff's celebration we acclaim. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring out the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, O we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you, dear God. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
As we begin the week, we entrust ourselves in the hands of the Lord and to pray that increase our faith. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. Announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Well, fish fries over. <laughs> we, we hate it. But I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for making it probably one of our best, most successful fish fries ever. We thank you. We know it couldn't be yet. Yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. St. Anthony did it again. And you know, we really needed it coming back from the, uh, from the pandemic. It was so important for all of us. So we thank you. We couldn't do it without you. Especially we want to thank our volunteers. Those folks who came out to take orders, to clean, to cook. Especially our cooks, they left work early and to, to serve. And so we really thank you. We couldn't do it without you. And we're looking forward to next year. Thank you. I also wanted to uh, let everyone know that the gala committee is in the social hall. They're selling tickets for our gala on the 30th, 30th of April. Be sure to go by and get your tickets if you've not already done so. Okay, anyone else? As we begin our Holy Week, please make sure that you take the bulletin for the time of Masses. Uh, Holy Thursday, Mass begins at 6 p.m. And on the Good Friday, we have the Station of the Cross at 2 p.m and the Passion of the Lord at 3 p.m. And then the Vigil Mass is at 8.30 p.m. So please make the date with the Lord. It, these feasts, they come only once a year. Let's be there for the Lord and to walk with him through this holy week. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this, your holy family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.
Thanks be to God. We're in Mass in our green hymnals on page 538. Lead me, guide me. Be my aid when Satan and sin oppressed. I am putting all of my trust in Thee. Lead me, O oh Lord. Oh, lead me. I am lost if you take your hand from me. I am blind without thy light to see. Lord, just always let my turn be. Lead me, O oh Lord. Let me walk, Lord, let me walk, each day, each day. 